lines that I scratched in here for the checkering. See how they're kind of lit up with that white or that dust that I'm making is like baby powder and it's settling in those lines. So what you've got is a point on top and there's going to be a point that connects to here but I don't know the angle of it yet. The angle will be determined by this master line here going across this stock in lines and one of them will connect and touch that point. And whenever I do, that, that's where that point intersects. And if you try to outline that now and just go ahead and run that up there, sure as the world you'll miss it by about a half a line and it's, it's really ugly. So that's, that's my outline, my initial outline. When I start checking it, I'll show you the, how, it, how it all connects and, and works together. But those lines show up. Now you don't want to leave that powder in there when you finish. You want to blow that out with compressed air um, because that finish will clog that up. It'll it'll completely it'll that powder will turn back into finish and it'll just fill that line, that groove up and you don't want to do that. So now I will take compressed air, blow this off, and then I'll take a, a tack rag, a clean t-shirt with some paint thinner on it, mineral spirits and wipe it lightly just to take off any fine dust I'll blow it off again and then I'll let the shop any dust that's in here settle down before I start putting another coat on it well good morning it's about the end of February here in Tennessee and the weather's starting to turn warm in a few days I'm rounding third base and headed for home on this Mauser. It looks pretty good. But I want to show you something. I've not sanded this side. It looks okay. You know, it looks it looks pretty good, most people would think. <clears throat> I've sanded this other side. I'm getting ready to put hopefully the last two coats on. I'm not positive that's gonna happen, but I'm gonna try to try to make two coats do it. See these little, tiny, shiny spots? See how they glitter? When I've sanded it, and those little spots, the little dips, they're little tiny, that's the grain that's not filled yet. You can see them. Look at reflection. Use reflection to... To tell what things look like, to tell if things are smooth and fair and straight. And reflection will show you those little dips. Those are, they're not microscopic, but they're very, very, very shallow. This 600 paper doesn't cut them. It doesn't get down into the those areas because they may only be a couple of thousandths deep. But I have scuffed this side, and I'm going to scuff this side. Those little shiny spots are actually in this side too, but they're harder to see because the shine, all over shine of the gun, blinds you, and you can't see those little spots. But if you can, you can see them if I roll that light, the shadow of uh, the reflection of that light across them. You can see them. What I have found out with this permalin is if you if you sand it and you spray one light coat, and light coats are very important. Most all coatings that I've ever heard of, matter of fact, all coatings that I've ever heard of recommend multiple light coats as opposed to very few heavy coats. And so I'm going to go over here and show you a few other things. But back on the Mauser. I've got probably 15, 17, 18 coats, light coats on that with brush mostly. And then the last four or five, I've sprayed it. But you have to spray two coats on the last one without sanding. And the instructions on permalin say you can do that if you do it within four hours. Because if you wait longer than four hours, it dries too long and it the next coat won't bond chemically. It, the bond needs to be chemical. By sanding it and scuffing it, 
you get a physical bond and it can bond to it well but whenever you spray it and then wait less than four hours the first coat is still uh, not quite cured enough to accept the second one and it'll bond chemically that's my understanding of it <clears throat> this gun here is the one that I'm patterning the Mauser after and I just want to show you something this gun is about uh, the stock is about six seven years old this is a piece of Turkish walnut when I got it it was already made and finished but it wasn't checkered the, the man that made it uh, didn't know how to checker or was was something he wouldn't checker it for whatever reason so I had to take this checkering pattern off of a gun ad on gun broker a picture of a Highland stalker um, and and then take a picture with my phone and then bring it down here and look at it and figure out where these points and everything went and just freehand it on there and and checker that that's that's what I had to to, to do that's how I got it on there and that was his request but I'll show you something about reflection and about wood in general can you see the waves look at the reflection there's the see these reflections of the lights in my shop I have fluorescent lights and you can see them as they're wavy as they wave across, you can see it big time right there. Look at that reflection as I move across this. See those waves? That's because this, this wood wasn't completely dry. The more heavily figured the wood, the longer it takes to dry. Burl wood might take 15, 20 years to dry. It depends on how you dry it and the conditions and all that but generally wood this is a this is a factory Remington uh, 7400 factory stock they probably use kiln dried wood because they need they have so much of a demand and so they generally kilns will not even take it straight from the sawmill they want it to be dried a season or a year a season meaning a summer so six months before they leave and kiln dry it. If you try to kiln dry it straight off the mill, depending on what time of the year it was cut, uh, whether it's full sap or not, uh, you have issues. So they'll air dry it for six months to a year and then they'll put it in the kiln. Comes out about 7%. And generally they're using straight grain wood. You can see the, the, the lines in here just, just straight, plain, what a friend of mine calls Ruger wood. But <clears throat> that's a factory stock pretty straight this is a custom stock that wasn't quite dried long enough now if this stock was to be refinished and straight block this you're going to take those little microscopic little little bitty bumps if you run your finger over it, you can actually feel them and if you start sanding with a straight block you'll see them because it'll hit the high spots and you'll have little sanded stripes so that's just a a personal look at and how some wood ends up uh, and, and, and where, where it's going and why. So try to get dried wood. Now back on this Mauser, hopefully these little tiny grain recesses will fill in. I'm going to spray this when I get this other side sanded. I'm going to spray it. It's about uh, three in the afternoon and then wait till about 6, 6.30, come up here, spray it again, let it dry overnight. I should know something in the morning. But if you look down the reflection, look at the reflection, these, these lights have lines of reflection. See them? That's just reflecting the lights in my shop. But it's a good thing to look at. When you roll this stock and keep your eye on the reflection, you can tell the fairness of it. See this line from there all the way to there? When you roll the stock, you can see how it's fair. 
use reflection, use light. I'm starting the checkering on the Schmauser. And my light changes the color of this stock, which doesn't make any difference, but I have to have my light to see the shadows that I need to see. I'm going to explain this process up front, that way I can skip through it and save some time. Because I can't skip when I'm talking. So I've got my, my outlines, which are just a faint impression. They've got so much finish into them. It's, it's like cutting plastic. When I, when I cut that little bit right there, all I got out of it was just plastic dust. No, no wood dust at all. So I'm just going to clean my lines out. I'm going to connect the end of this point right there with a point and come down and then forward and then back down and connect with this line. It stops right there and that's where that thing will tip up and then back and then up. Um, where this crisscrosses, the lines that I have here are actually the very middle of a triple border. So I've got a I got to step inside and inside and inside and inside to make the actual border of the checkering. So part of my border will be cut in before I start checkering. That's just the way this one this pattern lays out. So <clears throat> the first little bit outlining and establishing my border is going to be really slow because um, I'm, I'm having to cut through this plastic and and I don't really have a line to follow it's it's so filled up with plastic with finish that that I don't have much of a line to follow so it's really slow and tedious for a while it'll get rolling here in a little bit 